At its most universal, A Raisin in the Sun is about the search for identity and how one defines themselves and how a society defines their selves, uh, whether it be what a particular race, a individual, a sex, a generation can, can hope for and strive to. And certainly conflict can ensue when the individual wants to go further than what society tells that individual uh, can be. And uh, I don't think that is a theme that is in any way new to the human condition, uh, nor do I, I think it's gonna go away anytime soon. Don't start. Start what? You're nagging. Where was I? Who was I with? How much money did I spend? Fortunately, why don't we just talk, try and talk about it? I've been out talking with people who actually understand me. People who actually care about what I'm thinking about. I guess that means people like Willie Harris. Yes, people like Willie Harris. Why don't you all just hurry up and go into the banking business and stop talking about it? Why? You want to know why? Because we all tied up to a race of people who don't know how to do nothing but moan, pray, and have babies. Uh, the play is based on a poem by Langston Hughes called Harlem. Uh, and the opening line of the play says, what happens to a dream deferred? And that is kind of where, as a set designer, I'm kind of basing things from. I'm looking at two major themes, uh, dreams and hope. Now, dreams and how we represent that in the play is, through the set is basically, we're looking at the tenement apartment and also the city encompassing them. So we have the basic structure of the walls and the furniture of the home, and then projected the background will be a, a cityscape of the tenement surrounding them. Um, much like a dream, uh, when you're having a dream, you know, the things that are in focus or you know, really strongly focused are the important elements, and the less important elements tend to fade away and not be as, as real. Uh, so with the set, uh, starting in the center, we've actually got full walls, trim, um, things hanging on the shelves, all the things you would normally expect to see in an apartment. Uh, as you go towards the edges of the set um, to be more dreamlike, uh, reality starts to fall away. The walls um, begin to lose, lose their skins and you start to see the two by fours underneath and the two by fours go away and it becomes less and less reality. Also the background was going to start out the cityscape as a black and white to show that monochromatic, that starkness. But as hope builds, more color will be introduced into the background as well because when you're hopeful everything seems brighter. Uh, there's a moment in the play where things kind of come crashing down a little bit, so color will fade again, and then by the end, when we get to our happy ending, again, you'll see more color introduced. Well, what you think your grandmama done, done with all that money? I don't know, Grandma. She went out and bought you a house. You glad about that house? It's gonna be yours when you become a man. I've always wanted to live in a house. <laughs> well, give me some sugar then. Go on and say your prayers. And when you say them, you thank God and your grandfather. It was him who gave you that house in, in his way. The concept for the show is quite simple. One, it's set in 1959. That was a period in the time of history where no matter how rich or poor, black or white, whatever you were, people still dressed and they dressed nice when they went outside. So when you watch the show, when you see people going in and out, you will see hat, gloves, purse, the full accoutrement. Now, for the concept that the director wanted to go with, we really wanted a sense of color progression. So as you watch the show, once the show begins, there's a lack of color because they're sort of still in this abyss place and not such a happy place. And we'll start out in a black and gray world. That is with the exception of the young kid, Travis, which he is a child. So he is already, and he's very innocent. So therefore he is full of color and life. He has not been oppressed yet. As the show progresses, we'll see each character come to life. And as they come to life, um, as their character becomes more aware of who they are on their journey, we will see them add more vivid colors as the show progresses. Um, by the end of the show, it will be an explosion of color. And that's basically the concept for A Raisin in the Sun. Where is it? Well, it's out there in Club on Polk. Where? 406 Club on Street, Club on Polk. Club on Polk. Mama, there ain't no color people living in Clybourne Park. Well, I guess they're gonna be some now. 
also the, when we talk about dreams, there are two main dreams. Everybody has a dream, but the two main ones that I see are in opposition. Uh, Mama dreams of moving the family to the green suburbs, and part of her dream is represented through her flower, which sits on the windowsill in the center stage. And then Walter, her son, dreams of acquiring status, of getting respect, and he sees that through becoming a business owner, buying a liquor store, but staying within the city. So their dreams are in opposition. I'm Adele Day. I'm playing Walter Lee Younger in A Raising of the Sun, also known as Brother in the play. Uh, Walter throughout the play is on the fence, trying to get out of his current profession as a chauffeur, and he's gonna do whatever he can to get out of that. Even if it is risking his family's well-being, he will do it in order to get out of what he's currently doing and provide for his family and do what he believes is right. Hi, my name is Anna James. Uh, I am playing the role of Ruth Younger in A Raisin in the Sun, wife to Walter Younger. Um, Ruth's character is not exactly a pessimist, but she is very realistic. She does have hopes for her family, but she doesn't really voice them so much. She kind of keeps it to herself. And she's just kind of living her life in every day of monotony, in a way. It is a matter of the people of Clybourne Park believing, rightly or wrongly as I say, that for the happiness of all concerned, that our Negro families are happier when they live in their own communities. This, friends, is the welcoming committee. Is this what you came marching all the way down here to tell us? The play is truly an American masterpiece. It's one of the few plays that can make you laugh, make you cry, but also make you think, you know, to teach, please, and move. And when you have a play that can do that, it's, it's, it's very special, and it's a wonder that it's had such a, a profound legacy in American drama. And we're just thrilled, honored, and proud to bring it to our stage here at Delgado.